I'm Allie, I'm the garden technician, and I run the estate garden. So the first couple of rows we use for um, flowers, fresh flowers, and dried flowers for things like Oktoberfest and company parties, um, any special events. And we also use them because they're for beneficial pollinators, so it's really great. And we, um, this is my coworker, oh. Narwhal. We have two oh, lizard. garden kitties from the Bee Humane Society. <laughs> and they from help, the Bee Humane Society? Yes. They help with our pest problem for things like rats, not lizards, because they're our friends. <laughs> but they're very friendly. And uh, they have their own little plaque on the end of the greenhouse. Narwhal. <laughs> nope, I want this lizard. You can't stop. Narwhal after the beer? Yes. Narwhal and uh, cherry chocolate stout. <laughs> for cocoa is somewhere. <laughs> She's the huntress. And we're in transition of seasons right now, so that's yeah. why we see a lot of things everywhere because we're going into our fall crops. Uh huh. Um, and in between our rows, we're doing things like radishes, um, and we're doing intercropping, which is just utilizing our space more efficiently, putting radishes in between flower rows and things like that. Um, we're using paper mulch for weeding, trying to save us time because we spend a lot of time weeding because we're organic. Um, and right now these look really sad because they were just pruned so that we can cram more plants into a space. And these are zucchinis. And we call these sections of the garden the headers. So there's already water coming through here and we didn't want weeds to grow so we just put a bunch of random plants and it looks beautiful. Yep. We are using T-posts to trellis our tomatoes. Um, and this is the before and this is the after. Oh, okay. And then we have a lot of random volunteers because this is where the butternut squash was last year and uh -huh. we just let them come up because why not? Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait till you see the real butternut squash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, this is nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah and you'll notice we have a lot of bugs and lizards and every kind of living organism out here because we are organic so we don't spray. We just char, dude. Yeah, and we have, that's an example of the random planting. That's so pretty. Dang. And this is our, our second um, succession planting. So that's our older stuff. And uh -huh. we started this so that we could extend our growing season. And we'll have them until frost. Um, this is a new bed that I just um, weeded. And I'm going to remove all the debris and flame weed it so that no new weeds come up. And mm -hmm. then I will plant beets in there. <laughs> this is the old zucchini that we're still producing. Yesterday we got a hundred, uh, 307 pounds wow. um, from our zucchini, so we're keeping them. And like I said, we spent a lot of time weeding, so that is why the paper is hopefully going to help us out. We are trellising our cucumbers so that we keep them off the ground and it keeps uh, pests from eating them. And they're at the end of their season, which is why they look really sad. <laughs> And there's, yes. uh, these are pickling cucumbers and um, lemon cucumbers. Hmm. And then more things like uh, zinnias and Irish eyes that are kind of popping through. Mm -hmm. okay. Alyssum. You see those lemon cucumbers? Oh. <laughs> that still good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll eat it now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then this is the reason why we started the new plantings of tomatoes because this is the end of their season. We're starting to see more Sorry, things. Sorry, tomatoes. Like, yeah, tomatoes. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing more things like disease, which is why you see random dead plants that need to be removed. Um, and because of the two massive heat waves that we had, we had so take them a out. really terrible tomato season. Yeah. Which is great that we use Comanche Creek as yeah. our alternative. It's not just us. I mean, you, could, you could talk to Comanche Creek. They're all taking a hit this year. Yeah. It's really bad. Cause they like the heat, but that's just not that too much. much. Yeah. 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 They like the sun, not the heat. And then we have things like this week where it drops down to 80 degrees, and we need that heat to come back up so that our <laughs> greens will turn colors. They're not. So yeah, is that how has that been affecting your vegetable garden in general this year? Um, uh, the we, two heat waves. We have been hit really hard. We have not. I don't think for a month we've had any tomatoes at all. Yeah. We've been we've Very been trying to bring now. them in, but what's happening is when the plant's stressed out, then you have things like disease that just take over and then you just so lose like, the entire plant. These, like all these blooms, have like these yellow flowers that you see, two, 
three weeks ago when it was 107, 108, just like this last week, all the blooms, they get beautiful and then they get so hot and they just go, you know, so it's like they have to recultivate and restart and it's a pain. It shocks the plant as well because it's trying to produce something that it just did and sort of pushes things back a little bit. But we're still getting, I mean, well, even though we're getting stuff from Comanche Creek, like maybe we only pull, you know, a couple pounds or a few pounds here and there, we'll still incorporate them. Yeah. any way we can so I mean we're still pulling cherries we're still pulling heirlooms and the, when you say you get stuff from Comanche Creek you mean Comanche Creek's a, a farm that uh, farms out of South Chico um, Jim Miller runs it over there and we get a lot of stuff from him so we do a lot of stuff not only from here but we grab locally as much as we can within the Chico area for sure but how are his tomatoes because he we have 2.5 acres he has like 200 or 20 I don't know he has a huge huge acreage okay so, so he has when, enough food. yeah when we're only producing five pounds he's producing 500 pounds okay so it's gotcha it's different. and this is the orchard and there are peaches and nectarines mm. and we have um, figs on that side and sour cherries um. It's, yeah, it's really hard to see in there, so. <laughs> and uh, we can go around the back side. Okay. Um, and you might be able to see that a little better. Okay. Do you like tomatoes? Yes, I do. Mmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, they're delicious. Yeah, those are just snacking, just for snacking. Yeah. And we, I mean, when I say that we're not getting very many, we're, we're used They're to still hundreds good. of pounds a day. Uh -huh. And now we're bringing them about 50 pounds a week, maybe, so. Which has been really nice because when I told Brandon we had a the garden dinner, um, I told him Friday, I have no tomatoes to give you, I waited. And he said, it's fine, let's just find something else. And we told him he had melons and he threw that in and replaced it. So he's constantly coming up with ways to help us out. Get a oh, yeah, we have okay. a bird problem, so you'll see a lot of things like uh, this tape, reflective tape. Yeah, I was wondering what that's for. To deter them. Um, this is the same one Jim had earlier. Yeah, that's, the, that's uh, it. No Indian or Indian free? <laughs> no Indian. Well, it's the, it, it came from the Indian. Club. And when you come here in the off season, Jim will prune these back. He's fantastic with these trees. Yeah. And this is when we tried. Oh, try it. So right. sweet. Yeah, we They're so happy. sweet. And juicy. Mm. Mm hmm. Look at that. <laughs> this is our uh, citrus street section, and we have a bunch of different varieties. Yeah, oh, I see a butterfly. Beautiful. Oh. Uh, finger limes, kefir limes, um, lemons, oranges. And then in between, we have lemon verbena, which is really super oh. aromatic. Uh, um, I'll put it in this air. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth smelling. Thank you. Um, this is our berry section, and, and what's happening right here is we just removed a crop, and um, we'll till this in, add compost, and put a new bed. And these are raspberries and thornless blackberries. And I think the raspberries are coming on. Yeah. Don't piss off the bees. Yeah, there's lots of <laughs> bees. Um, and then we have um, apricot trees. These ones right here? Yeah. And then artichokes down the center, and like I said, the weeding situation is out of control. Uh, just another example of how we're trying to intercrop. We're putting gourmet strawberries in the boxes because we're just utilizing this. It's being watered, so we might as well put something in it. It's more productive. Is there air product? Yeah. Now, if you intercrop like that, will the strawberry or whatever you plant there, will that pick up any flavor of the apricot or vice versa? Uh, I don't know if it works like that. Okay. Maybe. I'd know. like to say yes. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, the gourmet strawberries are really sad and sickly looking. They're white and kind of small, but they're the best tasting strawberry that I've ever had. Huh. It's like a starburst flavor. Really fruity. <laughs> Interesting. Delicious. Do you have any ideas for what 
that could go in. For apricots? Those aren't going to Or the strawberries. To... Oh my god, it's endless. <laughs> The, the way that I cook is if we have something that's really amazing, like they're pulling out a peach that's like the best peach you've ever had, or she's like, this is the best strawberry I've ever had. The last thing I want to do, or any of the kitchen staff really wants to do, is um, destroy it. So what I mean by destroy it is take away its quality. I mean, if it's really great, and you know, all we need to do is wash it and maybe split it in half or put it on a salad or just show off its organic nature, then that's what we're going to do. Um, and that's kind of the route that the menu's taking. Now, like I said, if something gets really nasty, or not nasty, but we call it off-grade or B-grade, if it's got a bruise on it or it's not going to be its best quality as by itself, then we can start doing things like purees, ice creams, um, jams, jellies, preserves, all that kind of stuff. But um, if it's really great in its natural form, I'd try not to mess with it too much. Just let it be what it is. I forgot to mention about in the orchard, we have um, stakes that are habitats for bees, and that's what that metal contraption is. Um, and we're trying to provide more habitat for native bees, and there's also, if you notice, our bee box. So um, bees are your friends? Yes, bees are our friends. And the bees that we're used to are honeybees, um, but we are trying to provide habitat for local native bees that do not colonize their solitary bees. So this is just an example of us trying to create more habitat, um, and that's a, an ongoing project. <laughs> Going for one particular there. There are um, boxes for birds and bats, and I don't know why. I think the trees are really overgrown that we can't see them. But they're along the tree line. Say it again. Uh, they are sweet and not soft yet, so I would a week or two. Perfect. So have you already been out here? It sounded like you were coming out daily in the mornings to yeah. pick. So what time do you come out? No, I don't really come to pick. I just okay. mostly come to kind of feed my belly. <laughs> no, um, I just kind of come out to see what's going on to stay involved with the whole program. Uh, and then I try to get the rest of my staff involved as well to get out here and, and see what's going on, which they've been doing a really good job of. But mostly I just come out here and ask a million questions like, what is this, what's that, you know? Um, I ask Jim a lot of different questions about, and Ali as well, like, what's the varietal name of this? So it's it's something that we can really um, show off on the menu. So a perfect example would be when we see these uh, big ball cassava melons. Um, it's just a world of difference. And this breed was made by uh, John Bidwell.